Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacy, and you're joining us for our Leaders and Legends segment. Our guest for the segment is top real estate investor Peter Peter Vexelman. How you doing, Peter? Doing great. Thanks for having me. So he's more than just a top real estate investor. He's like the biggest in the world, I think. Um, he is from Atlanta, and he's become one of the top real estate investors in the entire Southeast. He's the owner and principal of three Atlanta-based real estate businesses. Vexelman is involved in as many as 15 real estate transactions per week, and his weekly transaction can average well over $2 million. His companies include RBP and Real Estate Investing Arm, Vexelman Coaching, a firm that helps real estate brokers grow their companies by instructing them how to buy and sell real estate as part of their offerings, and Yates Estates, a KW or Keller Williams Community Partner real estate firm and one of the fastest growing real estate agencies in Georgia. Real estate continues to be the number one opportunity to gain a solid return on your investment, he says. In our region, Atlanta, and many parts of the Southeast, they're red-hot real estate markets, and we've been on the forefront of growth and have been a major player in helping investors find the right type of property whether it be residential, recreational, or even commercial. So, Peter, how did you first get into investing in real estate this way? Well, it's been many years ago now, about 15 years. I actually used to be in a franchising business. I started my own company, and three years later, we had franchised it to 15 states. And at that point, I was no longer an entrepreneur. I had a board of directors, had a bunch of employees, wasn't really in charge, and that wasn't really my style, wasn't my gig, so I actually sold out on that and was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I was introduced by a book called Deals on Wheels by Lonnie Scruggs. It was about mobile homes. Read it one night, called Lonnie, said it's the most unbelievable thing you know I've seen. And he happened to have a seminar that weekend. I went there. Uh, when I got back, bought my first mobile home. And uh, a couple of years later, developed the largest brokerage chip of mobile homes actually here in Georgia. And, um, uh, Basically, that industry changed just about overnight, and so that was my next natural progression to jump into real estate. Wow, that's amazing. Um, so why invest in real estate as opposed to, say, the stock market or equities or other forms of securities? Well, the, the, the thing I always talk about real estate, it's a business where you're truly in control, whereas most other things that you're investing into, other people are in control. You know, you're giving your money to brokers, mm -hmm. they're in control. You're investing your money in the companies, they're in control. You know, real estate is one of those safe havens, in my opinion, where you're truly in control. You know, you control what you buy. You control how to manage it. You control how to fix it. You control, you know, the pricing. You know, you, you pretty much all the way through the process. So if you're, you know, I always tell people, if you're more of a passive investor, there's nothing wrong with letting other people determine your future. If you're more of a hands-on, in control, feel confident in what you're doing, I think real estate is absolutely the best industry to be in. Hmm, what, that's awesome. So, hmm. first of all, do you occasionally lose money on properties? I do, but probably the last about a couple thousand properties I've bought, you know, knock on wood here, um, I haven't lost anything in the last couple thousand. Okay, so when you're out looking for investment, what to you makes a great property investment? Well, it's a numbers game. I mean, real estate is really numbers driven. You know, people say location, 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 and location does matter, but that just accounts for certain numbers. So you're always looking at it from a numbers perspective. Are you buying it right? Are your costs to fix correct? Are your, you know, if you're borrowing money, are you, is your financing terms correct? Um, and then ultimately, obviously, what are you going to do with it? You know, are you going to, are you a long-term player? Uh, you know, are the rents going to make sense financially? If you're a buy, buy, fix and sell, or, or the sales price. So it's really, it's a numbers-driven business. Um, different investors look at numbers differently. You know, I, you, my, my magic number is about 20%. When I'm making investments in real estate, I want about a 20% return. It's just like in any other industry. You start at 20 and then you're, you know, you're giddy when you end up at 10. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Interesting. So let's talk about business owners. Do you think that every business owner should own the building that they're in as opposed to renting it? No, no. I mean, I'm been in both directions and, mm -hmm. and he just, you know, it just really depends. For instance, when I'm in hyper growth, like I am right now, we've literally switched offices three times in the last two years because of we need more space, we need more offices, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and we need certain locations. You know, you, you can't do that. If you're going to buy a building and have to sell three of them within a couple of years, right. there's a very good chance you're going to lose money on it. Whereas if you're kind of a, a more stable 
environment and you know you're going to be a long-term player and you're in not just a long-term player but your model is pretty much a mature model and you're going to be there for a long time then yeah potentially that's a good time to to hmm. to, to, to buy your own building okay so as a real estate agent so you got into this through the investing end and then built a real estate company around it so what is the pitch to a potential seller so let's say a seller contacts you because they just want to sell their house. How do you explain to them the difference between you just putting it out on the market and you actually buying it? Well, you know, not only did I get into it as an investor, I still am an investor. Right. Um, but, but I do, but I have combined, you know, as you point out, both of the, both of the models. So in my model, with the, the uniqueness of my model, and the reason we're exploding right now, not just in the Georgia market, but in, in about 10 different states across the United States, is that what I've done in our model is I've successfully combined a traditional real estate investment company with a traditional brokerage. Mm-hmm. So when a seller does contact us, see, that's the thing. Sellers have been taught to do exactly what you just said. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to go one way or the other. You know, you got to go with the realtor, and every realtor is going to tell you the same thing. They're the best, they're the greatest, mm-hmm. their brokerage is un- unbelievable, their company is the best. Or they've been conditioned to talk to an investor, in which case, hey, you know, give me your property at fifty cents and a dollar, and then let's let's hug right. it out. Whereas our approach is totally different. When sellers contact us, we don't tell them what to do, but we take what we call a consultative approach. We just basically let our sellers know with us there's options. Mm-hmm. For instance, Mr. Seller, we can actually buy your property if your situation warrants. We could do this, this, and this all the way, all the way to the fact that it, we can help you sell it. So what? And and, and so. The goal of our those initial calls that come in is for my people to set appointments, to get in the door, to, to expose the seller to something they've been not, never been exposed to before. Like, wow, I have options. I'm in control here. And then what we do is we set our team of agents or realtors into these sellers' homes, and then on the spot they make a determination based upon maybe the condition of the house, maybe based upon mm-hmm. the life circumstances of the seller. And so but the goal is to... To keep that seller in control, the seller also me. We give them options, and the seller chooses the options. Do we go down the investment route, which is a lot qu- quicker? It's a lot cleaner. Maybe not as much money there. Or do we go down the traditional retail side, which is a little bit longer, um, maybe a little bit more tedious, for more financial upside there? The keys keep the decision making in the seller's hands. Gotcha. So, is there ever a time where you see a property and? you buying it as investment is not an option. For example, a particular price range where you say, nope, it's just um, houses over 700000 are never going to be a good investment, or is literally any property that a seller calls you on potentially could turn into an investment property for you? Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about me specifically, then, this, then, then the second option is the correct option. Right. Obviously, you know, to, to a lot of other investors, they're confined by geography. Yes. They're confined by their financial ability and ability. But from my end, from my end, you know, I like to, we, we look at things strictly from a financial perspective. Mm-hmm. Does the deal make financial sense? If it does make financial sense, then we start moving forward with it. Okay. So now I understand you coach people to do this too. So other real estate people that are listening that are interested in doing this, you offer coaching. Where can people find out about the type of coaching you offer? Well, we offer actually, it's it's more of a partnering program where we partner up with very savvy people, Mm -hmm. either savvy brokers across the country or savvy team leaders on the retail side across the country or savvy investors who are already doing this business, they're successful at it. Mm -hmm. And when they hear me talk about this combining the two, light bulb goes off like, wow, this makes sense. How do I move forward with it? Right. And and so you know we're, we're you know we, we're actively partnered up with many uh, individuals in that capacity. And so the way to get a hold of me to apply to go through to our towards our partnership program on that side is to really just send me a text mm-hmm. uh, message to send me a text message directly to my cell phone at four zero four nine one five nine six eight five. Yep. That's four zero four. Nine one five nine six eight five. Put the word trifecta in there and tell me a little bit about your current business model, and then we'll touch base with you and kind of go through a, a, a qualifying interviewing process to see if you may be a potential good partner for us. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. So, is there a particular a good time for you to purchase a property, or it could be any time of the year? 
Yeah, I mean, year has nothing to do with it. I mean, I guess the only bad time is the time I don't want to make money, and that right. part of the year <laughs> never exists. Well, you're down so south, now, so <laughs> weather is probably less of a factor for you than mm-hmm. it is for us. No, yeah, I mean, literally, it just it's it's, it's year round. You know, again, it's it's a numbers driven thing, not a seasonal or, or yep. anything like that. Okay. Once you buy a house that you're going to rehab and flip, how long does it typically take you to turn it around? Well, it depends on the size uh, of the rehab, usually, size of the project. We try to be in and out, whether it's a small project to a large project, within, you know, four to five months. Do you keep any of the properties and rent them, or everything gets flipped? I used to. I used to have a portfolio about 405 doors. realized the worst part of my week was the time I met with my property management team. Mm -hmm. So that just wasn't my style, wasn't my gig, so I divested myself of all those. So now I'm a short... Now I'm a short-term investor. You know, get in, get out, get in, get out. Okay. And when you are offering the partnership model to a seller, is there a particular percentage? Do you say, for example, the fair market value is this amount and we will, if you want to work with us as a buying it for an investment at 70%, is it that simple or is it more complicated? Yeah, it, it, it is a little bit that simple. But since my partners tend to be across the United States, that 70% sometimes fluctuates depending where you're in. Gotcha. You know, whereas if you're in a West Coast, you in a high-end market mm-hmm. uh, where deals are a little bit harder to find, you know, you can get something there literally 85, 90 cents on a dollar and still make money. Hmm. You know, you're in some other markets, you may have to be in a little bit potentially below 70%. So, so that 70 cents, although is a correct mm-hmm. kind of frame, it, it changes, tends to vary based upon what market we're investing in or doing deals in. Gotcha. Is there any type of property you just steer clear of? No, again, it's a numbers-driven, you know, the mm-hmm. numbers-driven business. So as long as there's an opportunity or a legitimate opportunity to make money on it, I'd like to say no. Okay. And because of the way you're doing it, both as an investor and as a brokerage, are there any specific legal intricacies involved in the transaction? Um, no, no, not really. You know, okay. again, when our, in, when our agents going in there, we're, we're a client of theirs that like make an offer on, they make an offer on, on our behalf on a particular property. And if that mm-hmm. offer does not work, boom, then just move it into a listing, okay. traditional listing presentation. Now, as far as you overseeing all of it, are you like, what does your day look like? And what kind of team members do you have to have in order to pull off 10 to 15 properties a week? Yeah, and that's just in my Atlanta office. You know, yeah. out of all my satellite offices, you know, that number is way, way higher. It's all about having good people. You know, I have people that are extremely smart, extremely competent. They understand the vision. They buy into this model of consultative approach. And and so, you know, I, I like to think that I spend my day the way a real business owner needs to spend a day working on the business. You know, my, my value proposition to my company is, you know, I'm always recruiting good people. I'm painting a vision, and I'm making sure the cash flow works. Right. You know, besides that, the day-to-day tasks are handed off to, you know, my upper and mid-level management. Right. Wow. And then as far as the people doing the work, I have done several rehabs over the years, nowhere near the tune of what you're doing. But one of the challenges, especially when the market's good, is finding good help as far as contractors. So are you Mm -hmm. outsourcing that or do you have your own team that's handling it? You know, I've gone, that's a good question. I've gone in both directions. I've had an in-house, we've outsourced, mm-hmm. um, and um, it, it's always a challenge. It's, it's a challenge that never disappears, even if it's in-house. You know, you're working with certain type of a, a mindset, you're start right. talking, you're working with certain type of individuals. So really, it all comes down to how you structure it with them, the kind of relationship you structure, how you write up your contracts, how you pay them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, for instance, you never want to prepay. You want to want, right. always want to postpay. Um, you know, you want to have budgets up front. You want to have penalties up front. You want to have timelines up yeah. front. So what I've really learned to do is not necessarily try to change that culture. What I've learned is how to, re- how to work with them correctly and, and, and try to structure deals with them correctly. And, and so, again, we've been fairly successful in the last number of years in terms of that side of our business also. Okay. And then as far as anybody listening now that let's say that they're a real estate agent potentially interested in investing as well, does through your partnership model, do you have different financing options beyond traditional financing? Uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have have a number of 
of, of options that we bring to our partners' attention when we work with them. And a lot of markets, I just become the investor. Okay. You know, so we partner up with a high-end broker, let's say. And again, this is not really for just one single agent, right. unless this is one agent that's just killing it out of the park. Right. Um, you know, most of our partners tend to be either brokers or team leaders that have a semblance of a team underneath mm-hmm. them. And sometimes, you know, they're like, wow, this model makes sense. This consultive approach, this investing yes. side makes sense. I really don't have that piece. I don't know anybody that could still, I actually jump many times still in the investing side to teach myself for them. And I become the local investor for them. Okay. And last question for you is, do you do it with commercial apartment buildings or is this really just residential one to four family properties? All kinds, but majority, majority of that second, you know, residential, you know, small multifamilies. Okay. That's awesome. All right. This is Peter Mm -hmm. Vexelman. And you have a website too, coachingbypeter.com, people can check out? Yeah, that's strictly on my coaching. Those are people that want to be on the, you know, just strictly want to get in the investing world, very yes. much aimed towards the beginner world, maybe intermediate world. For people more high end people, that's the trifecta, and that's where they want to text me that word trifecta to my cell phone at 404 915 9685. But you're right. If somebody just wants to learn how to be a, a typical real estate investor, they can go to coachingbypeter.com and learn a bit more about strictly my one-on-one coaching program. Wow. That's awesome. Well, thank you for the, your time. We know that you're crazy busy. Off to your next deal. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Appreciate it. Enjoy talking to you all. Thanks, thank guys. You. That's going to do it for this edition of Get Real with Bob and Stacy. Tune in again next weekend for more. 